Logitech brought us here to Switzerland to check out the G900 Chaos Spectrum, an interesting looking mouse, but with some really bold claims, especially when comparing it to a wired mouse, which traditionally would have been a lot better in like almost every possible metric. They claim, however, that it has now reversed. They're claiming that the G900 is better than a wired mouse. Let's do some science and figure it out. So we're starting off with the RF Labs. This is probably one of the most important things about this mouse is its wireless performance. That's what they've been trumping really, really hard this whole time. So we need to benchmark it. We're gonna test it with huge amounts of interference, without interference, all this different kind of stuff and see how it compares to other mice. We're gonna do that by coming inside of an anechoic chamber, but this time it's not an anechoic chamber in terms of sound, it's an anechoic chamber in terms of signals. So RF, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff isn't gonna be able to leave the room once the door is closed and isn't gonna be able to come on into the inside. But to cause that interference, we have this antenna right here, which is gonna be shooting out massive amounts of amplified RF, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth signals. What they did was they went to a LAN of about 300 people, measured the signal noise, and then amplified that by a little bit more to make a crazy worst case scenario. Over on the other side of the room, there's all this foam kind of stuff everywhere. That's so that signals aren't bouncing around throughout the room and you just get a solid trajectory so it's better and more consistent for measurement. Here we have the mouse rig. So this is a jogger that keeps a pad moving under the mouse so that the uh, actual sensor is constantly firing and sending information, which is important because you need the mouse to be actually working. And then the mouse is held in place above that. Across the room a little bit right here is the receiver. So this guy is actually talking to the mouse. That wire goes through a tube to the outside and then we're measuring actually the tracking of the mouse out there where the actual interesting stuff is. So let's check that out. So as you can see back here on the spectrum analyzer, they have a crazy amount of noise being fired in that room right now. But over here, you can see a tracking tester where it's just tracing the cursor movement of the mouse as that jogger is going around. And it is in a very, I'm gonna reset this so you can see it drawing. It is in a very consistent kind of pattern, which is good. There's gonna be some drift from the sensor, but that's actually fine. All sensors have some amount of drift. Um, but the good thing about it is that it's consistent. It's not going all over the place. And if you're not making robotic exact circular movements, it's gonna be extremely predictable where everything's gonna be anyway. So this is a good sign. And this is for the G900. So now we're testing the Razer Mamba, exact same scenario. This time we're gonna try it with the signal noise on and with the signal noise off. So you can see what it is in a more perfect scenario. The Mamba is currently set up and good to go, powered on, joggers running, antennas over here. Let's go check the results. All right, so the Mamba 2015 is hooked up inside. That's what's running right now on the tracking tester. As you can see on the spectrum analyzer in the back, there's nothing really going on. That's because we have the antenna off. So what I'm going to do is come back here, crank the antenna on. So I'm going to turn this dial a little bit. There, that's all good to go. The spectrum is now crazy. You'll see it actually moves where it's where it's kind of firing huge amounts of spectrum. So it's not going to be a consistent problem. You can already see on here. I'm going to reset it so that we have some more room to actually see it get messed up, but it's jumped all over the place. These lines that you see is where it stopped tracking completely for a second and then engaged back in somewhere else. You can see that instead of just simple sensor drift, it's actually jumping all over the place. I'm going to reset it here. It's going okay at the start, but then you see one big jump there. We'll wait for it to do a few more. There's one jump right there. So there's going to be bad spots. Sometimes it'll be okay because maybe it's away from where the antenna is firing huge amounts of information. But then other times, as you saw before, it might actually start jumping all over the place because it's kind of getting overpowered, which is not very good. So there's a line there. There's another line there. It's getting a little bit worse now. Yeah, so that's the Mamba 2015. Let's move on. All right, next up on the chopping block is the Ouroboros. A little bit of an older mouse. It's currently running on the jogger. Its sensor is currently over here. We're good to go. One other little bit of information that I want to give you guys is this is the antenna that's receiving the signal. So when we show you guys the spectrum analyzer, this is the thing that's outputting that information, just in case you're interested. So next up, Razer Ouroboros, that's on the inside. Right now you see it going with nothing really happening on the spectrum analyzer. Seems fine, a little bit of sensor drift, which is completely normal. Now let's herd it a little bit. So, I'm gonna turn things up. 
There we go, spectrum analyzer is going like crazy, stuff sweeping across like we saw before. Moving back, now that happy little bit of sensor drift is no longer really very happy. As you can see, there's already two major jumps and it's completely changed direction, three major jumps now. Yeah, so not the clean, nice patterned thing that we saw with the G900. It's a little bit more of a mess. Now looking back, there's one, two, three, four, five, six major jumps, I think. And instead of just drifting nicely upwards like it was before, you're going up and then cranking way over to the right, and it's probably gonna screw up again later on. Not the end of the world, but not perfect. Last but potentially not least is the Sensei. So we have the Sensei rigged up on the jogger and we have its receiver on the other side. Something to notice about the configuration of things as well. The receivers are always placed in line with the very front of the mouse. And the way that the jogger works, there's little arms going all the way around so that it can hold it in place perfectly despite the movement of the actual jogger. And it doesn't have to press any buttons. So it's not pressing left or right buttons. It's not pressing the back buttons. It's not doing any of that kind of stuff. And it's holding it in place, which is pretty cool. So the Sensei, isn't doing so great. You can see on the spectrum analyzer, there's nothing really going on. We basically have it off. Um, and that's not just simple, normal, nice unified sensor drift. That's quite messy. Let's start over again somewhere clean, give it a nice clean slate, and then hit it with the antenna as hard as we can go. Just to see what happens. Wow, okay, so this one, Ooh, that is just, that is horrible. So one of the interesting things that this one does that none of the other ones actually had a problem with is you can see the lines get kind of squiggly and they start doing weird spirals and actually making things that aren't at all the shape of what it's doing, which is a huge unusable problem. Again, something to remember, this is an insane worst case scenario. It's beyond like a normal kind of worst case scenario because they went from a like 300 person computer LAN, which is an insane scenario for any wireless device, then made it a little bit harder. But this thing is completely failing. The other ones were failing pretty hard and the G900 had zero issues whatsoever. So I think that's pretty cool. So to create the device, the G900, that beats all of the other devices in this crazy worst case scenario test, it takes a lot of things. Skill, science, testing, all that kind of stuff. It's not just buy the better thing, put the better thing in, and then you have a better object. It's not that simple. So what they do is they use simulators in order to test what the actual end result is going to be. That's not always perfect and just putting something in there and running a simulator won't magically solve all of your problems. That's where the skill component comes in. They're able to get their RF simulator results to be extremely similar to their actual measurement through skill. That's extremely important because it helps with your iteration process. That way you don't have to build a new full device every single time you want to test it, which is going to help a lot because they have to release a product sometime. Then they also have to pay attention to where different components within the mouse go, like the battery. Battery is a huge deal. With some older mice that even Logitech had, the positioning of the battery could cause weak spots in your signal as it went around. But the sizing and the positioning of this battery is a little bit better. They, they have it on a different z-axis within the mouse so that the emitter should be able to have a strong signal going all the way around. Super cool. Next up, we've got the sensor lab. So what we're gonna be doing here is testing motion latency. So how long it takes for a movement of the mouse to actually go to the computer. We're not worried about the rest of the latency in the system. This is just what Logitech would have control over. So we're gonna do that by coming in here and using this turntable. The service on here is just like a SteelSeries QCK type surface, so probably something that's pretty common in someone's home. We're gonna start with the Logitech G900, which is already on here. It's not torqued down, it's not too light, it's just kind of exactly how much someone would be pushing down on the surface, because you don't wanna grind against the mouse pad, you don't wanna do anything like that, that would mess up with the results. Next up, we'll have a Razer Chroma, which is actually a wired mouse, so we'll compare it against that, and then we have a a Mamba 2015, which is another competitor wireless mouse. There's a little bit of plus minus here. There could be plus zero to one millisecond or anywhere in between due to polling rate, but spoiler alert, it's gonna win by more than that, so it doesn't really matter. 
Another thing I forgot to mention is that the mouse is placed very specifically on the turntable mouse pad. It's placed at a 45 degree angle so that X and Y axes are contributing the exact same amount. They have to be very precise about these things because extra variables like that could screw with something in a way that would mess up your results. So they have the right amount of tension down, they have the right angle, and they have a huge amount of samples, all of which are good. All right, so we're gonna run our first test here. You can go right now. And what you'll see on the screen in a moment is it's going to accumulate data over time. So what's actually gonna be displayed graphically is rounded a little bit, just more for presentation so that you can kind of see where about things are. But below that is more of the hardcore math, no rounding and you can see the mean. So we have to wait a little bit for it to gather some data and then we'll give you a more an accurate mean. So after taking 33 samples of movement, the mean latency was 4.79 milliseconds. So that might not sound impressive yet, but just wait till we try the other mice. So we're about to run test two. This is against the Razer Chroma, which is actually a wired mouse. You can see here in the device info, it is in fact the Razer Chroma. We're gonna be comparing it against our previous file, which was running the G900. So we're gonna have blue data showing up on the chart. That's for the previous mouse. And the green data, as you can see in here, color green, will be actually for the Chroma. So let's run the test. So we have our first results, the G900 versus the Razer Chroma. As you can see here, the green is much higher than the blue, which means that the green lost. This is motion latency, so you want a low number. As you can see, the median for the G900 was 4.8, as we already discussed. The blue is the same numbers that we had running on our previous test. But the mean for the Chroma is about 6.88 which is two milliseconds more, which is a lot because you have to pay attention to each segment of your latency throughout the entire, entire uh, equation. So your graphics card, your monitor, your mouse, all that kind of stuff. And reducing each one by relatively small amounts is a huge deal so you can get the total number lower. So having Logitech's number of the input from their mouse due to motion lower is good, and that means that it's lower than a wired mouse, which is pretty damn impressive. Another kind of cool thing to look at is that the lowest, so the fastest rate at which the motion was able to go from the mouse to the computer for the Razer mouse was about 5.5, which tied the highest or worst result from the G900. Just kind of a fun little tidbit. So this time the mouse we are testing is the Razer Mamba, as you can see in the top. We're comparing it yet again against the G900. So the compare with file is the original G900 test that we ran again. We're doing 33, 33 trials, the exact same that we're doing every time. This time it's gonna show up as pink. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so we're done testing the Mamba 2015. And this is kind of why I haven't liked wireless mice in the past and probably why a lot of people haven't either. Look at the data, it's a mess. So you've got results from 0.5, which are junk data. We'll explain why that's junk data in a moment, all the way up to 18.5, which is probably caused due to lag in the transmission of data over the wireless signal. If it, if it misses a report and then has to do it later, it's gonna be massively delayed. Your mean is at about 9.3, which is much higher than the 4.79 of the G900, but probably more within the actual capabilities of the sensor. The problems with the junk data and the really, really high late reported data is more due to the implementation of the sensor instead of the standard capabilities. Last but not least, we have click latency. So realistically, what all of these different stations have been explaining is that we don't necessarily need to be afraid of wireless anymore. I was afraid of wireless before, but I think that was justified before this mouse came out because as we've seen, there were some problems with wireless mice. Now, a click latency would be a huge one if it was worse than, say, a wired mouse. So what we're gonna do here is actually measure that. So I'll explain how we'll do that now. They have a wire going into here, but you can see that it's not the actual normal one. This is wired directly into the switch instead of actually um, the mouse itself so that you have your wireless adapter still running. That has been done on the G900, a Rival 300, and a Razer Chroma. So you can see there's two wires going into each one of these because these are more naturally wired mice. Now I'm gonna move these guys out of the way. This uh, wire from the switch is going into a signal adapter. This then sends it to a latency measurer. So what this one is recording off the bat is exactly when the uh, switch is pressed. 
um, and then it starts a timer from that point in time to when this adapter is able to send the signal to the USB analyzer. So that's when it actually receives the signal that the switch was pressed because that one isn't wired in, that's a wireless signal. So you get to see the total latency of the mouse within your system, similar to how we were testing total latency of the mouse in previous sections. This isn't the total latency until something would appear on your screen because there's other things within that equation like your graphics card and your monitor and whatnot, but this is what Logitech can control. So in order to actually run the test, they set up this kind of game thing where you go click on the lit up circle. This is just causing you to click a number of times at different intervals so that it can be recorded over here. Much like the motion testing, motion latency testing that we did earlier, it'll show up a graph which will have some slightly rounded numbers, but we'll give a good visual representation of the results. So we're going to run this about 30 clicks and then get a result after that. So as you can see, graphically, our average is at about 4.5. It kind of all huddles in a nice bell curve right around that area. And our mathematical, not really rounded as much average is at about 4.3. Surprisingly similar to the latency in our motion input latency test. So yeah, let's move on and try the other mice. The first contender is the SteelSeries Rival 300, which has its firmware updated to the most recent one since last Friday. So it's a wired mouse, so theoretically up until now it should be faster, so we'll see if it reigns and holds that title. Let's begin the results and then compare it against the G900. Okay, so looking up here, we can see the blue data is from the Logitech G900. The green data is from the SteelSeries Rival 300. Um, you can see again the mean or general average from the Logitech G900 was about, about 4.5. And now with the Rival 300, it's kind of less of a more perfect bell curve. The mean looks somewhere around 7.5 though. Moving over to the actual math of things, it looks like the average is, yeah, about 7.6, which is a pretty significant increase, which is not good. You want a lower number. Again, it's more like golf. So it's not over yet. Let's try one more. So the program can only store two sets of data at a time. So for round three, I'm actually gonna have to redo the G900. So here we go, G900 test two, and then the G900 test two will be compared against the Razer Chroma. Okay, so yeah, that's not really very good for the other team. Uh, looking at the graphical average now, it's probably at like a little bit below 11. And uh, yeah, that's about right. 10.9 milliseconds compared to 4.29. Sounds like wireless wins. Okay, that was actually kind of awesome. Uh, I'm pretty convinced. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below or on Twitter at Luke underscore LAFR. Thank you to Logitech for sending us here. If you guys want to see more stuff, click up here. We've got videos that we show. Usually this goes at the end of the outro. This, I'm switching the game up. It's going to the beginning this time. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike the video if you disliked it. Be sure to stay subscribed so you can see all of our Linus Tech Tips content. If you want to use our Amazon affiliate code, that's cool. You can buy stuff. We get a fun kickback. It's all nice. If you want to check out the forum, become a contributor there. That's super helpful. And if you want a shirt, check out the description down below. See you guys next time.